Hey there, I'm JD and welcome to my channel. Please subscribe, please hit the bell, please hit the like if you like what I'm doing. If you don't like what I'm doing, then don't do anything. If you uh, want me to do some watch service, uh, I'm going to say right now, and if you're in Canada, it's a lot easier for me to do this. Uh, write me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com. I've got uh, quite a few watches on my bench right now, but I'm getting through them uh, pretty fast. So today we've got this old vintage Waltham watch. Um, I made a video on it yesterday and uh, we're going to have a look at this old watch and see whether we can uh, restore this. It's in uh, pretty iffy condition um, and I uh, don't know what the challenges are ahead until I strip this thing down and have a look. Just so you can have a complete view of this watch and not have to watch the other video. Um, I tested the hands, I tested the, the hinge here is a bit stretched. I don't think there's anything I can do about this hinge. You press that in and then close it down like that. And then I looked at the back. Um, I trimmed my fingernails today. Now I got my thumbnails are all short. Can't do anything with them. But as you can see, this baby is in pretty rough condition um, from an aesthetic perspective. I'm not sure what it looks like from a mechanical perspective, but uh, we're going to strip this thing down, put it in the wash machine. I'm going to take some uh, pictures of it, but you can see it right now, what it looks like, and uh, let's get this uh, done. All right, one more watch look. <laughs> look at that watch. looks pretty interesting. I did notice that the amount of powder or something that's kegged up in this jewel hole, as well as this jewel hole. So we're going to get rid of all of that, hopefully. Um, and it looks as though there's a couple of plates here uh, attached to another couple of plates here. So let's strip this watch down and get going. All right, the first thing I need to do here with this watch is remove the hands. Now you'll notice this watch does not have a crystal. So I want to move these hands over to the 9 o'clock position so they're not in the way. So let's see if I can uh, do this quickly. And I'll just put them that should be fine like that. I don't want to get the um, hand removers near that second hand so but I, and I want to have enough leverage to lift these up so matter of fact I'm going to go to the 10 o'clock position so I don't get the dial and play as much the sub dial and play as much so let's move it to the 10 o'clock or 10 30 or whatever that position is right there see if I've got enough room here to do this yep and I've got a little plastic coating or plastic sheet here. I just got this from a bag, a bag, and so I just, there we go. So now I'm clear of all of the um, material or clear of clear of the, su the sub dial. So I don't want that to get in the way. So, so there we go. Remove that. Get my trusty brass tweezers and just lift that out of the way. Now, I got another watch in play here, so I got to watch watch what I'm doing, so I don't uh, mix things up. I don't want to mix things up. Now I've got two other hand removers here, uh, left and a right, uh, and they're a little bit smaller, and they're good for for removing a second's hand. Uh, not so much, not so much the other hand. I got to switch glasses because I'm. I need to put my famous glasses with the airy loop on. So yeah. Uh, have my normal reading glasses on, and they're not helping me a bit. I mean, I gotta gets me a close up. I gots to gets me a close up. Gots to. The English language spoken incorrectly. And um, is that off? You know what? It was off. It just it was off, and I just need to move it just a bit to get it out of the way. And then grab this from the dial. Like that. Get that out of the way. So now we've got. This stuff, you can hear me putting away my tools. Put away your tools. Always put away your tools. Get them out of the way. Oot of the way. So that's good there. Um, and I've got the uh, watch in the setting position pulled out, which is good for removing the movement. And again, there's some fingerprints on here from the watch repair person who did the last bit of work, I think, probably 100 years ago. So we just have to take this dial screw here and move this over and that should allow me to push the uh, movement out the back. Now, it doesn't look like there's any other retaining screws here, which is strange 
but it might have a tab on the inside. I'm not sh completely certain whether it will, whether it does or not. So sometimes these old watches had a tab. So you got to watch when you're uh, watch when you're taking them out. I'm just trying to move this around here to see if there's anything that. Uh, yeah, it feels like there's interference here at the back end here. So I'm going to have a closer look at what's there. Um, also looks like the, in this particular watch, there's a little screw right here, as you can see. And this screw is probably to remove the stem. Because once I remove the stem, maybe the whole thing falls out. Because that's, that's more of a European watch move. And like I've seen us and a lot of European watches have this. And American watches typically never had this. So, but if I move this out of the way, does the stem come out? Look at that. So the Europeans stole it from the Americans. Is that true? It probably is. So I'll put that away. And now, will the watch just pop out? That is the question is. Let's push this just a little bit here. I don't know. It's still giving me trouble here. It looks like there's something caught right there. Maybe the, it might be the screw here. I have to get in a little closer and have a look. I might be able to rotate it now. Sometimes that is what you do. And there's a catch and you rotate it out of position. So this one is causing me some thinking. I was hoping I didn't have to think today. Uh, moving that down, uh, I'm just remove this screw altogether because it might be catching. Um, that's why you got to remove the hands right away because the hands will get in the way and your fingers will hit the hands etc. So I'm leaving little fingerprints on the face of the watch but I'm absolutely positive I'm going to be able to get rid of those prints later. So, so now it's still not moving out of the way. And what I'll do here is screw this screw back in now it may have something to do with this the watch coming out no nope. I'm gonna have to investigate this because it doesn't want to pop out doesn't matter what I do doesn't matter what I do oh I know what's going on here you know what I was distracted by my own intelligence here what's happening here is that because there was no crystal on this watch I forgot I have normally removed the crystal on here and uh, I forgot that the bezel for the crystal is still there right so just remove that carefully um, now the watch should come out now it should come out because being held in by that bezel and you can see there's a point mark right here so I'm not sure whether that's an alignment mark it might be it might be to, to align the movement properly uh, let me open this up again and see if I got any more luck. Now look at that. This falls right out. So I'm the idiot. Um, because there's no crystal, it confused me. Just a tad. So now I'm going to get my nice comfy uh, watch cushion. So this watch has a um, dust cover, as you can see right here. And in order to take the dust cover off, all you do is wedge your find a little gap in here usually there's a little gap see this here little tab is the alignment tab for the case so the case would have a similar alignment tab on the inside right there and then when you put this back you'd align that tab up uh, to make sure that it would be um, in position and usually the the um, well not usually the dust cover here um, it's it's got a little tab in there to make sure you put that on the right way as well so so everything is kind of tabbed and aligned and while you're doing this you got to keep your fingers away from that from the balance just keep them away from the balance because that'll screw you up and you'll be all pissed off if you foul the balance in any way so and the first thing I do is remove that balance I don't want that balance to be in my way so I'm going to remove the balance and I'm going to put it on this balance holder hopefully and what I do is I just eyeball this and I notice that 
if I eyeball this lined up with the uh, center of the balance and the tack lined up with where the screw hole would be, I can just turn that until they're perfectly aligned. Uh, that's a little bit too much there. Right about, right about there is good. And then I'll lower this. Is this already lowered? Yeah, it's already lowered. Maybe I'll raise it up a bit. And that will take the stress off the balance when I remove it. So let's just get down here and remove this balance. I got all my other balance holders are taken, I think. I have to look around here. Actually, my... Yeah, not all of them are taken. I might be able to put it on the, this one here as well. So I broke my own rule here and I didn't have a toothpick on the bottom. So, but I have another balance holder here that I actually, that I made, that I like a lot. And it has a little tiny jar that I can put the screw in. Look at that. And that way you don't lose the screw. This one here is made in China. This one here is made in Canada. <laughs> so there you go. And now when I remove the balance, I, I will lift it up from here. It was loose already. It seemed to be very loose. Um, and I might get another screwdriver to help it along. Depends how easy it comes out. Uh, it doesn't want to come out easy, so I'm just going to grab another screwdriver here. And lift it up and then help it along. And get a good grip on it and make sure it doesn't move. And then I can lift the uh, balance itself out of its corner. See that? Zero stress on that. I've only started, just started using that technique. Now when I lower this, I make sure that the roller table goes through the hole here, and then this is perfectly aligned. Where is that tack? There it is. And then I can lower that on top. And as you can see, there is zero stress on that balance right now, and it's resting nicely on this little faux leather pad. Um, so I'm pretty happy with its position in life. There we go nudged it just a bit. Now that's on the faux leather pad and it's no stress on the hairspring. So that's perfect. And with this particular device I can actually put a glass over the top of it so it won't take up one of my movement holders. But in this case I have a free one. I have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. I have six of these. So make sure you have a lot of these available. And when I put this in here, I just have to make sure it's not going to rock away or fall out or something, right? So it happens to have a perfect position with those feet where it just sits in between these little slats or slots or raised up um, road bumpers. <laughs> slow down, slow your speed down. And then I can put that, and I make sure I keep my screw here with the balance so I don't have to hunt for stuff. And I'll also usually put the cannon pinion, or actually, in this case, I'll put the pallet fork in here, things I don't want to put in my uh, watch cleaning machine. So, so there you go. And then I'll move this out of the way. And I got to make sure it's out of the way, and I don't want to mix up balances because I have another balance for a different watch but this is an old watch so it should be pretty good and I won't be able to won't really mix that up. Now not that I want to do any advertising for Bergeron but but uh, the Bergeron 5395 I got this at a really good price I think from eBay actually and uh, it's a gel pad so it'll protect uh, the movement and when you put the uh, movement down and there's a where the cannon pinion is and the hour wheel sticking out here They'll press down on the gel pad, but this thing is pretty rugged, so I've never had any permanent dents in that gel pad. Now, I believe I removed the power from this movement. I'm trying to remember whether I did or not, but I'm going to take my bench key anyway, and I am going to... And there's that screw I mentioned earlier that's used to, to hold the uh, watch stem for this old watch, so you don't usually only find those screws in the in European watches as far as I know. See this watch is dirty as heck. Look at this. I'm hoping I can get rid of all that and it'll be a thing of beauty when I'm finished. Um, so I'm just gonna just gonna see if I, there's any power left in this at all. So get this thing in here and push in. Is that working? Yeah. 
you know, it's setting the time, so that works. And in this case here, I'm trying to put my uh, put this in to wind it, and nothing is happening at all. So in this case, I don't know what's going on, but it doesn't seem to be able to wind. It might be full of dirt. I don't know. Um, so what I'll do is I'll flip over to the to the Myers number 58 movement holder, so I can get some put some stress on on this and try something else. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the screw from the ratchet wheel and this thing here is also jammed up pretty good but if I do this and then move this out of the way is it going to go back? Yeah it is. So I can take the stress off the mainspring that way as well. Now all the stress is gone from the mainspring because you can actually wind the watch using this screw here but I don't recommend it but you can so um, I might as well leave it in the movement holder here. It's, it seems to be comfortable there. Um, screw it in a little tiny bit so I can get a grip on the movement. There we go. And what do I got to do here? Let me remove the face first before I do anything else. This is what I wanted to do. Back to plan A. Talking and working. Now when I look at that face here, you can see there's that's that's the dial foot right there and there's a little screw holding that dial foot in and as I rotate this around there should be a couple of these that's another one right there a little screw for the dial foot right there right there and then another one where the heck is it right here so I have to loosen those screws and try to wedge this dial out and you can see as I said in the other video that there's some hairline cracks on this um, and I'll clean those up uh, as much as I can with Rodico after I've cleaned the movement and reassembled it. And I'll work on that, on those little tiny, uh, those little tiny hairline scratches. So hopefully I can just get in here and turn these. This is an ancient watch. I'm you're always worried about stripping the heads on these little screws with an old watch like this. So I'll unscrew these and then I'll tighten them up again after for cleaning. But I don't want to lose them. So put a boatload of pressure downward and then unscrew it. And you shouldn't have to unscrew it all the way. Just enough to get the uh, dial foot to pass by that screw. And the, the screw just grips that dial foot. And let me get it. see if I can improve my camera work here. There we go. So what I'm kind of nudging it, just sort of putting a little bit of pressure and then moving it to see if it will, uh, if it gives. And so these these dials are on these metal plates, right? So so when you put your screwdriver in, it should lift. Um, and my old long thumbnails were really handy for this job, by the way. So, but I cut them because for the video they kind of look disgusting. So I said, all right. Better cut them off, even though they're really useful. So there we go. There's the dial. There's the back of the dial. This would be a porcelain dial, but it's got a metal back on it, I believe. Yeah, it does. So it's two layers on that dial. If I can show this to you, get that camera so you can see the top layer, where the porcelain is, and then the metal. So, And these are the dial feet. I've replaced these dial feet. I made a video online on how to replace dial feet. And I have a dial feet soldering machine I bought from Vietnam of all places, right? So, and it's uh, some watchmaker in Vietnam. So there's no dial washer on this as all at all, as you can see, right? You just move this Bergeron back in here, so this should just come up like that. So no dial washer. And what else is there? Nothing of. Let me move this a little closer. I'm gonna adjust my camera just a bit here. All right. I should be able to pull this straight up. If I can't, I'm going to grab my Bergeron. Uh, I'm going to grab my my, my uh, Canon pinion remover tool. I'm going to talk louder because I'm away from my microphone. I should really turn this off and then turn it back on again. But I'm lazy. So here's my Canon pinion re remover tool. This tool has got two mouths on it, which is kind of kind of cool. As you can see it's Jaws, so it'll grab that Canon pinion. And then when you pull back, it lifts it up. So you have to make sure that the 
end parts here are away from the minute wheel. So I usually put it on this side here and then push down on it like that and then with any luck that cannon painting comes straight up. There you go. Gone. And you can burp it back out onto the mat. If you're lucky, if you're not, just grab it with your hands and pull it out. There we go. There is the cannon pinion. I'll put that with the, uh, the dial wheel. This thing got loose a bit, but this is a 100-year-old tool, so I'm only a 62-year-old tool. And if I can get the minute wheel out, I do, just so I don't lose it. There we go. Get that minute wheel out of the way. See, now I've got this thing poking out. So when I flip this around, I don't want this to be on my pad, so I've got to put it in my movement holder. And always be cautious of, of the seconds uh, pinion, or pivot rather. Seconds pivot is right here. So that's, you can snap that off without a problem. Um, if you put this watch down uh, on a mat this way, it, the uh, center wheel uh, pivot will protect the fourth wheel pivot here, so there shouldn't be an issue. Um, and there's a patented March 6, 1988. So that's pretty cool. So if you look at that, easy to see that patented March 6, nine or 1888, 1888. So they put a patent on this movement in 1888. It's funny they got it written this way, right? But if you look at the number, it's the other way, just to confuse you. So it says 959.13. So, so that's when they made a patent on this particular particular movement, which is kind of cool. So general patent. Maybe general patent was involved in the patent. Don't know. Another don't know. So also when I put this in the Myers movement holder, I don't want to crush anything. Uh, with the 21 Joule uh, railroad grade watches, there's a lever because they're lever set and sticks out a bit and you can crush it in this movement holder. So you look at the edges and make sure that there's nothing that can get in the way there. So so you're so you're good, right? So I'm gonna have to examine all the jewels here. There's likely gonna be a jewel replacement for this watch because of the uh, the age of it. I also look for my this pivot here, but this doesn't really get involved with that pivot. So just keep the knobby here out of the way so you don't squish it. Uh, somebody wrote me. I think it was uh, Ed wrote me and said, "Jobby do hickey of the hickey jobby do." Because I always use those kind of terms. My father uses those terms and still does, by the way. So he calls things the jobby doohickey. So I started using jobby doohickey as well to make him proud of me. So I uh, so this this has got a bunch of screws, jobby doohickey screws. So the first screw I want to remove here is from the ratchet wheel, and I just hold this down with my thumb and start turning there we go and I'm using my biggest screw, screwdriver here which is my baby blue one so this this is a use a right screwdriver for the right screw and you won't have it strip right so that is the plan so that's that wheel and I can get that out of the way I can sometimes edge it up with my tweezers yeah lucky today and I keep the screws in this in the uh, parts pretty much together even when I put them in the uh, the bin for watching. This screw, I have to figure this out someday because it depends on which side this is, I believe, <laughs> of this. So as I remove this, this could go clockwise because they're often, no, nope, this one is counterclockwise. Sometimes uh, this one is righty tighty, lefty loosey. Um, sometimes they're the other way around. And I still have to figure out how that works mathematically, if they're on one side of this ratchet wheel or not, but whether it matters. So this one uh, unscrewed the normal way, and it's got a uh, plate with a uh, an alignment plate in the middle, so that allows it to free up. So let me just stop farting around here. So that's the plate in the middle. So this screws down onto that little pipe here, and that's threaded, and then that goes down down pretty tight and then that allows uh, this wheel to move so I think this is called a crown wheel I'm gonna look it up right now I'm brilliant 
It's called the crown wheel, as you can see on the right hand side. And that attaches to the ratchet wheel right next to it. This is a great illustration. If only I was further away and you could see it, right? And that's probably called the ratchet wheel screw. So we can just move this. There we go. Ratchet wheel, ratchet wheel screw, crown wheel, and crown wheel screw. That's it. Get this book out of the way. This book, by the way, is the War Department Technical Manual. It's the War Department. So this is World War II, I think. Who knows what war this manual is in, but this is the TM9-1575. You can still find these online, and they're excellent watch repair manuals, actually. So they give you the basics, and it's all it's back in the day when pocket watch repair was part of the uh, U.S. Army. So the guys used to have a whole, I wouldn't say it's a brigade or division, but they had a lot of people doing watch repair, So, which is kind of cool. So there we go, that's that. Um, and I don't, like I said before, I'm a little bit anxious about removing these springs here because they, uh, this is an old, old watch and I worry about this breaking. I'd rather wash it all intact and, and then just um, oil it after. So I'm going to stay away from those screws. Uh, but right now I want to remove, uh, I think I want to remove this plate here, right, to relieve the uh, mainspring barrel. So you can see how this is, this is um, two plates, one here and one here. And this is kind of weird because this plate is screwed on only on these sides, and there's the center wheel. And then this plate is screwed on here and here in two places as well. So it's kind of an odd configuration. So I'm going to see if I can get even closer. All right, this is as close as I can get before it becomes a problem. But I've got to remove these two. And if I look at the screwdriver, it's way too big for that screw. So let me go down a few notches here and see if I can find the next screwdriver. Will that fit perfectly? Yeah, so that fits perfectly. And so I should be able to loosen that. There we go. Loosen that up. Put that aside. Those are weird screws. They're kind of they're kind of long. I can hear some noise downstairs. I think my wife has a visitor. So these screws are kind of they got a long um, entry part and a short sta uh, shaft, which is different, right? And then there's this screw here. Let's get my loop out of the way. When you're wearing your loop, sometimes the loop just gets in the way of seeing, of, of, of viewing. So you just flip that out of the way so you got three dimensions. Otherwise you got two dimensions. Looks like the top of this there is some attempt to blue this, this screw as well. If you look at that, that's blued. If I focus on my finger and then there's a screw there and it looks like it's blued on the end. So uh, the other one, not so much, not so much. Now we should be able to lift this straight up. I put this screw back into the plate here and I may remove that after. But I'm just going to have it see if I can find the notch. So there's a little notch right there. And you just use that notch. You put your screwdriver in like that and it lifts straight up. Then I put my, my tweezers in. If I can find an area where I can put my tweezers in kind of long. Then I can lift it straight up like that. There we go. That's the plate. Thing of beauty. And then there's the uh, watch movement here. So Next thing I always do is I always take a photograph of this area here because if I don't I will forget how it go went together so before I uh, deal with taking out these this is the pinion here um, before I start taking out these uh, components just see if I can remove that mainspring they often let you uh, <coughs> design these watches so you could remove the mainspring quite easily to replace it but in this case when they're three-quarter plate watches the mainspring is uh, you got to remove a plate to get to that mainspring. So we remove that. And now I'll get rid of this plate here, um, which should free it up so I can get in there and get rid of that pallet fork, like remove that pallet fork. So same same deal here, just make sure you got the right size screwdriver. It should fit almost the full length of the screw. And that way when you put pressure on it, um, you're gripping the, the, the uh, majority of that of where that screw, the the, uh, the actual trench for the screw, I'll call it a trench, I don't know what it's called, but you're gripping the majority of that 
screw so the force will uh, distribute along that screw and not strip it or bend the screw at, at its uh, base. This one was already loose which is interesting but not a problem but it was already loose so uh, so now again I want to get get uh, I'll just move this movement around I don't want to squish this part so I'm going to look in here and so that is not going to squish which is good so just put that in there and you can see with this movement holder I, I have a fast release on this side here a quick release I press the button and move it out of the way and it's spring loaded and then again uh, I've got this button here which is also spring loaded here like that you can see that so and you can see in this case here that little tab that's on the side of the movement and that for aligning the movement with the case is not getting squished by the movement holder which is perfect so so I just move tighten that up a bit now I've got it, a grip on it and it's only as tight as the spring that's on the inside so I'm not too worried about it being too tight so again I find the groove on the side put my finger on the top so that it doesn't twist sideways and I want to make sure I can lift this straight out in this case it's coming out with the center wheel so which means the center wheel uh, just fell out here so what I'm going to do is is put that center wheel back in place like that very carefully like so and I'm going to take a photo of all this. Now, now, I don't think it's necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway. Right? And as you can see, it looks pretty, pretty gummy. It's pretty dirty, and I'm not sure what some of that stuff is, but mold and mildew. So I'm trying not to breathe any of that in. Here, it looks like there's a spring mechanism as well that aligns this up. See how that, that spring moves? So I don't want to remove that spring. That'll, that scares the crap out of me. Um, but I'm hoping I can just lift this whole thing up and out. But let's get rid of the wheels first. So this is the wheel I just took out. Just move that to the side. And that's the second wheel, which is the center wheel. Then the third wheel is an intermediate wheel. Has no function other than transfer power to the fourth wheel, which is where the pivot is for the uh, seconds hand. As you can see that, it's still there. And when I lay that down, I always lay it down I lay this down so that the pivot is facing upward so there's uh, no stress on it. So I'm pretty anal retentive as some of you guys have said or have admitted. There's my uh, escapement with little tiny feet and I'm going to make sure all that is well protected. Now <clears throat> I don't know whether this will just pop up or not or whether I'm going to have to do something but uh, I'm going to look at that a little closer after see if I have to remove anything seems to be a little plate right here and this yeah this plate may, may need to be moved out of the way but before I do that I'm going to remove the going to remove the let me see the screwdriver I need to I need to, to, f to work on my screwdrivers I think because they're a little bit they're angled too much this one here I already worked on so if this fits perfectly I can unscrew that pallet fork and not worry about anything so get down and dirty here and check this and it looks good so when I remove the first screw from the pallet fork a uh, bridge and it's no issue so I get this, I'm gonna move this and put this way out of the way the second screw I remove I want to make sure that uh, that I got a toothpick down on the pallet fork so it doesn't move up and bend the uh, pivots of the pallet fork. So put the toothpick down on the bridge here and then apply some pressure to remove the uh, screw. Hopefully you can see this. And whenever you hear the tick or you feel it, you know the screw's all the way out. And I'm putting these screws way out of the way. Now I want to carefully, if I can, lift this up straight up carefully. That's great. If I can't, then I have to kind of shimmy, shimmy a uh, screw in there. Nope, that went straight up, which is excellent. There's the uh, the bridge for the pallet fork. So someone corrected me the other day when I call it the balance bridge instead of balance cock. And basically, the balance bridge means it's a bridge and it's got two screws on it. The balance cock only has one screw on the back of it. That's the difference here. I'm going to look at these jewel holes as well and see if they're 
they're clean they're, they're, they're still good and not cracked so because this thing looks like it's in pretty rough condition as they say in the watch world but let me just lift this pallet fork straight up and get that out of the way so I don't I'm basically putting this pallet fork out of everything everybody's way and now I have to examine this to see if this lifts straight up it looks like the spring is on the side which means theoretically you could, you could lift this wheel straight up as long as you can take it out of the uh, out of its home here and if I look on the other side hopefully there isn't another patented device on this other side here if I look on the other side the screw is likely holding that in so if I remove this screw I'm probably good to go so I'm going to align this so that there's no pressure on these points so first line that up just a bit and yeah I just worried about this this screw here I could probably take that out but let me look at whether I want to remove that or not that is right there And there's no real spring on this one here, but it did spring this one out of place. So, so I think I'm going to be forced to remove all that. So let's just do that. Let's just bite the bullet and remove that spring and be very careful about everything. Oh, that rhymes. Bite the bullet, remove the spring, and be very careful about everything. Yeah, there's a chip in my screwdriver here. The old screwdriver chip. If you look closely at that screwdriver, it's called dressing your screwdrivers. But if you look closely at that screwdriver in the very end, there's a chip on that. So this screwdriver needs to be dressed properly. And if you look at this screwdriver, it's perfect. So and I've already dressed that as you can see, right? You can see some file marks on there, so but I don't know if this screwdriver is the right size. Well looky -a or keep -a -a. It worked. So I want to keep this screw with that spring, right? So I'll put that down and I'll grab the spring and move it out of the way. I don't, this is a very strange looking spring and I don't want to have to replace this. Look at that. It's a strange as heck. I don't know if I'd be able to make one of those. Well, that's, I'll be very careful with that. And then I'll remove this as well. And this is to, holds in the, uh, holds in the stem that's what this does and look at the dirt on this yeah look at the dirt on this so this is this is tray dirty there you go look at the dirt on this that is dirty as hell so I want to clean that up too so put that down and then grab the part that it's part of let's move that out of the way put that on my mat now do I just slip this back or does it or will it slip back? These screws here can stay on the plate where they are because all these screws here do is all they're used for is aligning that that uh, device. So if I just pick up on this and then back it off, is that gonna work? Or do I have to rescrew that plate out? Now you know what, I gotta remove that plate. So now that I've got that screw out of the way, I can bring in my Bergeron holder here like this flip that around unscrew this retaining device here whatever this is called uh, do I want to take a photo yeah, I'll take a little picture of this although I can remember most things um, there usually isn't a problem here but and sometimes I have to figure out how to put things back together and the uh, the setting mechanisms and winding mechanisms are always the hardest. I just hit my my hand on the camera. All right, that's out now, and I think it dropped a part down the bottom. No, it didn't. It wants to drop a part down on the bottom. If I lift that up, put take that out of the way. There it is. There. And with a ratchet on the end, so that's going to come out with the ratchet. And, and then on the bottom part, this just falls right out. So, And then this device here, 
is, and I can, luckily I can always back this stuff up, but that's how that goes in. And that's worthy of one more photo. My reassembly photos, you can call them. All right, took a quick photo of that. Photo finish. Let's move this camera over just a bit. There it is in the center. And then these parts should just come apart here. So that comes off there. And that comes off here. And then I think this comes off the end the other way, like that. Here we go. That's how it's, that's pretty much how it's lined up, just as I'm showing you right here, right? So there's no better way to show it than to, to take it apart. So these will all go into the wash, as they say. So hope I'm going to put all these together in the same wash and rinse cycle. Uh, the other thing I want to do is make sure there's no beveling on this gear that I took out. So this very small gear. I look to see if there's any beveling. So if I hold it sideways like this, is it beveled at all? And well, do I have to pay attention to the beveling um, afterward? And so I'll put this on the mat here and turn it and see if it, it does turn. So this has to come out. And there's a screw going through there and then this is like that and then this is like that there we go so these three parts here and i can see on the inside there's a taper there's a taper on the inside there so when i put the screw in i can't put it in this way because i'll i won't be uh, i won't be paying attention to the taper so i'll put that down on the mat right there and i may try to keep these three parts together not sure so that's that that and that now the mainspring Okay, so these mainsprings are a real pain in the butt. So what happens is they're floating. They're like a floating mainspring, as you can see. And they're so hard to put back together once you take them apart. So it's a, it's a challenge, effectively. But I've got to take this mainspring apart. And I think if I turn it the wrong way, it unhooks. I'm trying to remember whether this thing will unhook or not. But, uh, no, I don't think so. And the, um, the arbor ford is attached to the bottom part, so that's another impossibility. So I'm looking at which way to turn this to unhook it. There we go. So you just, you just wheel this thing in the opposite direction, and it unhooks. And there it is there. But then hooking it back in is a real pain in the butt. But it looks pretty clean, which I'm surprised, right? doesn't look like it's got a lot of dirt on it. And this one here hooks onto a tab on this side, which is going to be a little tricky to get back together again. But but that's why I'm doing it. So there we go. So this mainspring barrel looks uh, a little bit dirty, but not too bad. Um, and then I usually take a picture of the mainspring, and this one seems like it's going clockwise into the barrel. So it's either counterclockwise or clockwise. And there's the barrel. Take a couple of pictures. And now I get a screwdriver in the inside and see if I can walk this mainspring out of the barrel without killing myself. Alright, so get on this side of the barrel. And this is an old mainspring, likely. Uh, and I'm going to try to walk this out of the barrel. So get my screwdriver on one side. And then you can usually peel it away a bit but I keep my fingers on the inside like that my fingernails and then as I do this I walk it out so there's only one way of showing this and I think it's by moving my camera out all right there's the spring in the barrel so I've got this on this side here so I can sort of walk my hand around here and I hate these floating barrels because if you have any dome on your mainspring it'll It'll make the barrel go a little sideways, which will cause friction. And I'm walking it out right now. And just doing left, right, left, right. And there we go. I think that's the end of it. And I look at the hook on the inside. And there seems to be a little bit of a hook on the barrel. Yeah, that's the barrel hook. And there's the end part right there. There's the end part. And there is a hook on the barrel. Where's the hook? There's the hook on the left hand side there. So 
So when that winds back in, I got to wind that in into the barrel that way. So, so there's that. There's the mainspring. So now we've got like, zoom out here. See if I can go back. And make it. There we go. Look at that. That's a completely disassembled watch, and I'm going to now put it into the cleaning basket and leave that as it'll be the end of the video, and we'll go clean this watch. All right, it's time to stack the parts into the watch uh, basket. This is my my pearl for my pearl watch cleaning machine. <clears throat> pearl, 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 you are my darling girl. It's a Sunday morning right now. I'm a little bit. I'm not too tired actually, but I didn't sleep completely well last night. So I slept okay, I could say, but not like a really nice deep sleep. I kept waking up. Got a bad knee. Not sure if you guys have bad knees, but I got a bad knee. So I can put these parts in like this into this basket here on the bottom and without even removing the basket. How do you like that? How do you like them apples? And then I want to put the, the, the spring in now. I think I'd curled the spring up a little bit here but I gotta put it on the inside like that and then there we go so there's the spring there and that fits perfectly down there so we got the basket now with the main plates and the mainspring um, I think maybe I could have fit this in too maybe no, not like this I couldn't I could clean this by hand no let me uh, remove this basket here from the bottom let me remove the basket and do this properly. So this is my number one basket. So if I do this and remove this and then remove this, there should be a before and after this piece because of all of the crap that's on it. Now I can take this here, I think, because it should be the same size as this. And if I put this on top, like so. Will it, will it still clean? That's the question. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to leave it out. Maybe I can put it on like that. And then put the plates. I can put the plates on top here. So, like so. And like so. Like that. And then the mainspring. And it looks pretty good. It doesn't look like it's the mainspring doesn't look like it's coning at all, which is nice. That's my finger making it cone, but I'm looking at it sideways and there's no real coning on that mainspring. So that's good news. So that's the, the lower basket. Put that back in. And there's, this is an aluminum frame here. That's the, uh, part of this whole rig. I've got two of these, as a matter of fact, which is good. Always buy a second one if you're, if you know the first one won't, <laughs> won't stay in place. So now I want to make sure I group some parts here. Um, I might put the mainspring barrel in that main basket too before I close it down, but, but let's, let's make sure some of these parts are together so I can take these parts here. That was from the, uh, the stem effectively, right? And put all of this into this basket here. Um, and is there anything else I can put in there? without problems. I think I could put in the pallet fork and the pallet fork screws can go in there because they're not part of the stem so I'm not worried about getting confused and so that's good enough for this little basket here that's got nice stuff in there and these uh, little baskets have a finer mesh on them so they, I don't have to concern myself about parts falling out of the little basket and now the second little basket if I can fill all four, that's great because it's good to have it balanced properly within the cleaning machine. But here, I've got the world's smallest parts I want to put in here. So I want to put this in because that was part of the whole um, ratchet system for the... Uh, see this little tiny screw? Make sure that doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, that's perfect. And then i got to put in some other stuff that has nothing to do with this. So I'm going to put this in here, which is the... This is the crown wheel, the crown wheel holding device, and the crown wheel screw. Look at me naming parts. I want you people to be very proud of me. And I can also put in the cannon pinion because I don't worry about mixing those things up. And I'll put the second wheel and the rest of it in a different basket, maybe. Yeah, because I got lots of room here. So 
That's basket number two. Put that one down. All right, basket number three. Basket number three. What's going to be in there? What is going to be in there? All right, basket number three. I will put in. Look at what I got. That's small. I want to put this stuff in there. So this little tiny spring here. Put that in there. Put this in here. And this is a device that was holding in. Um, and I want to. This is the world's smallest screw for that spring. So I want to put that in there as well. And I don't think I want to put anything more in here. Because I do have basket number four, and I've got some baskets on top I can use. So, but I'd like to put the smaller screws into these baskets. And then basket number four. So I bought four extra baskets to fit in here, which is, uh, I think, a smart idea. So, uh, in this case, uh, I've got. Uh, what do I got here? I want to put in the uh, hour and minute wheel. So, put the hour wheel in and the minute wheel in there like that um, and I think that is all I'm putting in here and maybe the case screw right that, that'd be a good good thing for the case screw I will wash the crown by hand the crown and stem by hand and not put it in there uh, I think look at that crown and stem now maybe I'll throw them in for a wash I'll find some place for the crown and stem there we go. So that's that. And now I need to put in, so that's the second basket, but I believe I can tuck in the barrel into this first basket, right? So because it's pretty big uh, and I don't want the mainspring barrel, I won't, won't have the real estate in the other baskets for the mainspring barrel. So I need to tuck them in right here. So let me just grab that mainspring and get that out of the way. And put this. Can I put it right there without it interfering with anything? No, that's going to stick up. Um, I might throw it right in there. That's perfect. So I'll throw that right in there. And if I can put the mainspring, the other part of the barrel in here, that would be perfect. And, I, and it looks like I can. So that's good. So I got that like that. That way I can put this back in. I'm <clears throat> talking too much. And all these lids are closed on these baskets here, so we're good there. So we don't have any problems. So these are the smaller baskets on top with all the closed lids. And now, oh, now I have to fill up this. So let me put this uh, center wheel in here first and then put it with the pivot down like that. And then this is the seconds wheel or the fourth wheel and the escapement um, I can put in anywhere here I'll just try to keep it somewhere where it's not going to rattle too much put the escapement in by itself there and then the intermediate wheel because can find its own home here as well and then the ratchets and screws these screws all look the same so I can put this plate in here and it's not going to do anything, so I can throw the screws in with it, maybe, um, or or give them their own home. I got I got enough I got enough room. I got I got me enough room to give them their own home. And these screws are exactly the same size as the other screws, so I'm not too concerned now about plate screw sizes. Sometimes they're different. And this is, I believe, the screw for the for the uh, ratchet wheel. So I'll throw that in with the ratchet wheel. And I don't know if there's anything else I want to put in anywhere else. So I think I will do clean the crown by hand. It looks like it needs a little bit of steel wool or something to get to get that off. And then I see this. This is what we have now, which is nice. And I throw that down here nice and carefully. Grab the center of the basket. And when I look at the side of the basket, I just make sure there's no gaps. So... I look right on the side here and make sure there's no gaps where something could come out. Although most of the small screws I have um, in the smaller baskets, so they're not going to run away on me. And this here has got a little perforation on this side, and it's kind of clean on this side. So I want the clean side here to be married up with this uh, with this side here, like that. 
and the basket is completely filled and so that's pretty much that all right now I'm going to stack the remaining parts um, that I'm going to clean by hand in here so I've I can put the crown in here now because I've turned the face around see how this is soldered in the subdial so you got to make sure there's no pressure down on that subdial the crown on there weighs nothing so there's no issue there and I've got the pallet fork which I want to clean by hand and I'll just put the the uh, hands in here as well so now I've got everything kind of contained um, this is not going to close because I don't have the uh, stem in here to push this down to close it so all of this now can just go out of the way and I can get that just out of the way while I clean the watch and uh, and get it ready for reassembly so that's my video thanks for watching um, and stay tuned for the uh, next cleaning of this 19, 1897, 1897 vintage pocket watch, Waltham. See you later.